to again record it and share my screen with you. And can you all, <coughs> excuse me, can you all see a slide called The Structure of Life? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, let me begin. Okay, we're gonna talk about cells, eukaryotic cells, prokaryotic cells, and viruses. What is a cell? Something for you to remember, a cell is the smallest unit of life. Something else for you to remember is the cell theory. There are three components to the cell theory. First is that all living things are composed of one cell or more than one cell. The cell is the basic unit of life. That's why it's the smallest unit of life. And cells arise from pre-existing cells, not from spontaneous generation. So that's a theory and it's a well-established theory. It's been in place for uh, many years <clears throat> and it's uh, never been shown to not be true. Last point is that viruses are not cells. They're sometimes described as acellular, but they're not considered to be living because they cannot reproduce independently. On the next one, um, this has to do with sizes of things in the universe. And I wanna make a big point about this because the range of sizes of objects in the universe that we can perceive is uh, beyond our comprehension. So let's first look at, at this slide. On, on the axis, the x-axis, you can see sizes in nanometers, uh, micrometers, meters, and so on. And then you have objects that correspond to those sizes. So we have very small molecules. For example, water is a tiny, molecule. Uh, then we have molecules in very large, that are very large like proteins. We have viruses that are even larger. Mitochondria and chloroplasts, organelles are larger. Uh, bacteria, by the way, this, this, the pictures here are not to scale. Um, bacteria are not uh, smaller than plant cells. Um, animal and plant cells, frog eggs. Now all of these things to the left side, we cannot see or see very poorly without assistance. And so we use microscopes, light microscopes and electron microscopes, we'll talk about in a minute. But then the larger things we actually can see with our eyes, like hummingbirds, human beings, fir trees. Then beyond that, we, if we want to look farther, to even larger things, we need telescopes. And I'll come back to that in a little bit, but be first I want to see if I can show this video. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think I have to... A cell can be, how it can have all of this machinery. When we study science, it's natural to just categorize a whole series of things as just being really, really unimaginably small. So when people say, hey, atomic scale or molecular scale or protein or a cell, you often just group that together and say, oh, those are really, 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 really small things. But what I want to do in this video is get an appreciation that even though all the things I just mentioned are really small, there's actually a huge difference in the sizes of those things. And hopefully that'll give us Did you want us to watch the video because we can't see it, something. or at least I like can't. Cell can can't be, see it. How it can have all of this machinery, how can it can it? actually be. No, I can't see it. I can hear it, but not see it. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I can only hear it. Well, 
that defeats the purpose because what's important is that you be able to see it. Well, thank you for telling me that. I don't know what to do about it. Uh, as I said, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. And apparently in this case, it didn't work. So we'll forget that. All right, then we'll come back to how we see things. Here is a compound light microscope. You've probably all seen such a thing and probably even used them. Uh, with such a microscope, we can see things that, that you can't see with your eye, um, but the, the magnification is limited. It's up to about 400 fold. And what you see on the right here are four plant cells uh, with, with no staining. That's what they really look like in natural light in a light microscope. Now, if we go to the next one, you see the same thing, but with a transmission electron microscope. Now, here's the thing to remember about transmission electron microscopy. It, it gives you a good look at the internal structures of cells. Fine detail about the internal structures tells you very little about the surface. So note that down, that you would use a transmission electron microscope to get detailed information about the inside of a cell. Now in contrast to that, is another type of electron microscope called scanning. A scanning electron microscope, forget about how it actually works, but here's what to remember. It doesn't tell you anything about the inside of a cell, but it gives you great detail about the surface. And that you can see those same four plant cells are here uh, viewed with a scanning electron microscope at about the same magnification. So uh, <clears throat> keep those three types of microscope in mind and keep in mind what you would use each one of them for. Probably come back and ask you about this again sometime. Now to go beyond what our eyes can see, and think about the universe, we have telescopes. So contrast a telescope, which is for looking at very large things, versus microscope, which are for looking at very small things. And you see a space telescope, and this one on the right is a radio telescope in Puerto Rico. So what can you see when you point these things into the sky and look? Well, one thing you can see are galaxies. And again, I, I'm coming back to make the point about the sizes of things in the universe. So you see here in the lower left, the Milky Way galaxy. That's the one we're in. In fact, if you can see it, our sun is right here out toward the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. And all the rest of these points of light our, our stars. Our sun is just one of the stars, one of the many, many stars in the galaxy. Now, how big is this galaxy? Well, its diameter is 200,000 light years. How, how big is a light year? Well, one light year is the distance that light can travel in a year. And how fast does light travel? 186,000 miles a second. So if you multiply the number of seconds in a year by the, the, the distance that light can travel in a second, you get 5.8 trillion miles is one light year. 5.8 trillion miles. We can't even 
Imagine um, how far that is. Yet, you have to multiply that number by 200,000 to get the distance across the Milky Way galaxy. So my, my point is that we're going from very small molecules, very, even atoms we're going to talk about later, here on the planet Earth, but we can, and, and we can look at all kinds of things of different sizes between atoms and fir trees. And then when we look out away from our planet, we see monstrous big things. So the Milky Way galaxy alone can, contains approximately 300 billion stars. Again, that's, that's a number that uh, we can't even imagine, 300 billion stars like our own sun. And then the picture on the lower right is just one frame of one section of the sky. In that frame, there are 15,000 galaxies. So think about how huge this one galaxy is, the Milky Way. Think about 15,000 of those and the distances that each one occupies and the amount of space, apparently empty space, between and among these 15,000 galaxies. Okay, I, I don't want to belabor this. I hope you all get the point of what we perceive our universe uh, to be from atoms to galaxies. Okay, back to Earth. What kinds of cells do we see in nature? We see prokaryotic cells, bacteria and archaea. We see eukaryotic cells like animals and plants. And we see viruses, which are not cells. Prokaryotic cells are the simplest. They're very small. They're usually single cells. And the genome of a prokaryotic cell, whether it's a, a bacterium or an ar archaeum, is always DNA. And I should make that point right now. No matter what kind of cell you have, whether it's prokaryotic or eukaryotic, the genome is always DNA. However, with viruses, it's not the case. And I'll tell you in a minute that viruses can have either DNA or RNA as their genetic material. So that's an important distinction for you to... So prokaryotics and eukaryotics have RNA, right? That's what you said? No, I said prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells always have DNA. Oh, DNA. Okay, for sure. Thank you. Always have DNA. It's only viruses that can have RNA. Some viruses have RNA and some have DNA. <clears throat> okay, Bacterial, bacteria are generally found in either uh, as having either one of three types of shape. Either they're, they're rods, like you see on the left there, a bacillus, or a sphere called a coccus, or some of them are spiral shaped. There are lots of variation on these three themes, but in general, uh, bacteria have one of these three shapes. A prokaryotic cell structure. On the right here is a photograph through a microscope. Can you tell me what kind of microscope was used to make that picture? Trying to emission electron. Yep, you're right. But you can see the internal structure. It's magnified to a very high extent and uh, you can see very little on the, the surface. The various different structures are labeled in the drawing in the middle the DNA, the ribosomes, the cell membrane, and the cell wall. 
Uh, and then there's another drawing to the left showing pretty much the same things. Okay, eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic means, uh, eu means true, karyon means nut or nucleus, and there are generally two types of eukaryotic cell, animal and plant. As I said earlier, the genome of eukaryotic cells is always DNA. Uh, they are somewhat larger on the size scale. And let's take a look at animal cells. They come in a variety of different shapes and have different functions. So a muscle cell has its function. The cells are shaped as you see them here. Skin cells have quite a different function. Cells of the uh, nervous system are yet have a very different function and you can see they have a very different shape. And blood cells, among the most abundant in our bodies, uh, are pretty much always spherical or some, some semblance of spherical. Okay, here's something for you to think about. I'm not gonna tell you the answer. You may tell me the answer sometime in the future. Okay, in a human, there are 230 different types of cell. Each of those 230 different types of cell has exactly the same set of genes. That is about 25,000. So each cell in your body has 25,000 genes. I have a question. Uh-huh. Is the Zoom calls gonna be recorded and sent out to us so we can go back and reference? I'm recording it right now and I will try to make it available to you. I tried that last time and it apparently didn't work. So I'm gonna try it again. But these slides will be up uploaded on the uh, channel. The slides will be available, yes, for sure. I can't guarantee that they'll be annotated. And also, uh, we get, I mean, long time to get them in the course, I mean, meet, Zoom meeting. Excuse me? I mean, it took a long time to get in the Zoom meeting. It took me about 20 minutes. Oh, and today? Yeah. Time to get into Zoom? What was the problem? I don't know. It's showing wait. Did it call for a passcode or something? No, I did everything, but it's telling me wait for, uh, uh, it should be wait, that's it. And then I waited for 20 minutes until I get in. And then it finally let you in. Yes, sir. Okay, does anybody in the class uh, have a solution or have a, a recommendation for what to do when this happens? Because I don't know. I don't know what would have caused that. Um, last semester, my teacher would put the class on private like you did with the passwords. And so he would have to manually like accept people. But if you put it on public, everyone can just join at the same time. Did anyone else have trouble joining today? No, I, ha I had a problem joining in, but last Monday, and it, it happened the same thing. Uh, the administrator, I mean, you had to uh, let me into the meeting. So I was there for 40 minutes until I gave up. Did you eventually get in? On Monday, no, I, it didn't let me in. But out. this time it did. Okay, you did the same procedure and, and today, no problem. No, no problem. I believe you have to be like before 1230. So it will let you in right away. Okay, Amir, did you try before or after 1230? After 1230, about, uh, because I went to Congress, I tried to get the passport or whatever. Uh, you already sent the link uh, through the email, and then I went to email my uh, mm -hmm. uh, my my email to to get in a class, and then and my email when I when I uh, it should be took me after uh, Then they sent that it's about two or three minutes, and then when I tried to get in, it took me twenty minutes, and I already sent you email. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes to get in 
confess. <clears throat> well, maybe maybe a critical point is the starting time, twelve thirty, and uh, if you if you join before that, no problem. After that, you may have a problem. I'll try to fix that by uh, by not requiring anything to join. It, it, that anybody in the whole world can join. Um, anybody else have any advice for Amir? Amir. Okay, uh, let's get back to where we were. The question I'm posing to you about our 25,000 genes we have in each cell, and yet we have 230 different kinds of cells. Can you come up with a hypothesis to explain why different cells with the same genetic material function so differently? So think about that and won't dwell on it now. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it later. And we're going to study this question a lot later on in the semester. Another good question, <clears throat> why are we not just made of one big cell? Why do we bother to have 230 different types of cell? 230 different types, and in, the t in terms of the total number of cells in our bodies, it's in the trillions. So we have many, many, many cells instead of just one big one. <clears throat> well, the answer is surface area. So one big cell, if you look at the example here, one big cell, uh, has a, this one has a surface area of 5,400 square micrometers. On the right, if you divide that same volume into uh, 27 smaller cubes, now you've tripled the amount of surface area. And that's, <clears throat> that's critical, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that's critical if you want to be a large living thing for two reasons. One is that your body has to transport things from one place to another and transport among many cells from cell to cell is much more efficient than trying to transport through just one cell. Moreover, uh, communication, uh, for example, our nerves. Ner nerves have to transmit from head to toe. That's much more efficient uh, through many cells, many nerve cells, than it is if we had just one big cell. And that leads to the other uh, point to be made here about why not one big cell, and that is spe cell specialization. If you had one big cell, you'd have one specialty. Whereas by having trillions of cells, you can have 230 different specialties. Okay, is that anybody confused by that? Why we're not just big blobs? <clears throat> Okay, animal cell, <laughs> animal cell structure. Um, you, you can read these labels as well as I can and, and see the shapes. <clears throat> the nucleus is usually one of the larger organelles in a cell. You have the rough endoplasmic <clears throat> reticulum where the ribosomes are and smooth where the Golgi is. The mitochondria are the or that make ATP, that, those are the powerhouses of the cell. Microtubules, the plasma membrane is critical. <clears throat> then what do animal cells have that plant cells don't have? One <clears throat> is a flagellum. Another is a centriole. And we'll talk about centrioles later when we talk about cell division. And a lysosome, which is a garbage bag. <clears throat> and then here on the right, you can see, again, that's a transmission electron micrograph showing the fine structure of the internal part of a cell. And you can, you can cor correspond, for example, to mitochondria, what they look like in a transmission electron micrograph with a drawing of them uh, 
and to the left. <clears throat> okay, plant cells. Plant, as I said, plant cells have basically the same structures that animal cells do, but this is very important. The things that plant cells have that animal cells do not have. One is a cell wall. All plants have cell walls. Animals never do. <clears throat> they, are, they both have plasma membranes. The plasma membrane is very different from a cell wall. Central vacuole, animal cells have vacuoles, but plant cells usually have a huge area in the center of the cell, which is the vacuole. The most important thing is the chloroplast. And that's because it's only plants, only organisms that have chloroplasts that are producers. Every other living thing on the planet is a consumer dependent on- Can you repeat that one more time for me, please? I didn't understand. Uh, say that again. Please ask the question again. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you re-explain what you just said for me one more time? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm emphasizing the essential differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. So all plant cells have walls, cell walls made primarily of cellulose. Both animal and plant cells have plasma membrane, but a plasma membrane is very different from a cell. Uh, both kinds of cells have vacuoles, but only plants have huge central vacuoles. On most photographs, if you look at the electron micrograph to the right here, you can see that nearly half of the cell is the vacuole. This looks like it's empty. But the most important thing I wanted to emphasize here about the difference between plant and animal is the chloroplast. Plants are green. And we'll talk later about looking at plants that appear not to be green, but all plants have chlorophyll. And they are the producers because they're the only thing on the planet that can harvest energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy. So all organisms on the planet are consumers of what plants produce, and the reason they produce is because of Okay, so. Question? Yeah. Uh, so will an animal cell be similar to human cell? Human cells are. Human cells. Yeah. They are? Okay. So everything I said about animal cells is true about human cells. Uh, not all human cells have, have flagella, but some of them do. Okay, then let's go to viruses. Now, as I've emphasized, viruses are cells, but because of their importance, we need to understand their structures and their functions. And here are some examples of viruses. Uh, on the left, there are four pictures. One is tobacco mosaic virus, which has RNA as its genetic material. Next to it is T4 bacteriophage, which has DNA. And then HIV is on the bottom. It is a, an RNA virus. And you see pictures of them uh, to the right. These are electron micrographs. Uh, a rod, tobacco mosaic virus is rod shaped. Bacteriophage, it looks like a spaceship. And this shows it uh, attached to its host cell trying to in inject its DNA. And HIV is sort of a spherical type of virus. Uh, this shows pretty much the same thing. But then, why are we here online? It's because of this thing. Coronavirus, and here's a distinction that you should make when you read the newspaper, the disease caused by coronavirus is called COVID-19. 
You'll hear that most often in the media. The virus itself has a different name. It's called SARS-CoV-2. And that distinguishes it from many different coronavirus, types of coronavirus. This is a particular type of coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. <clears throat> now on the uh, upper left, you see a scanning electron micrograph of virus particles without any staining. You can see they're spherical and around the edge are little structures which are called spike protein. To the right, you see this uh, with artificially colored in green. You can see the spike proteins much better. And on the lower left is a human cell, probably a lung cell, being attacked by the uh, coronavirus. So each little yellow dot is a coronavirus particle. And this is a scanning electron micrograph again emphasizing the surface. It's scanning, it emphasizes the surface, and these are artificial colors. That's not what it actually looks like. Then there are two drawings here in the lower right of both the surface and the internal structure. On the surface, you can see these uh, purple projections called the spike proteins. What's critical about them is that 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 human lung cells and certain other types of cells just happen to have on their surface a receptor that specifically recognizes coronavirus spike protein. And it's because of that, it seems like it's uh, just an, an accident that there is this specificity, but it's because human cells can recognize the coronavirus that we get attacked by coronavirus. So after it attaches, uh, the cell internalizes it, and then it goes ahead and replicates. On the, uh, the right side of the, this diagram, I've circled in red the spike protein because, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk more about for coronavirus later, about how it actually causes disease. But for now, the spike protein interacts with the receptor on the human cell, and RNA is the, the nucleic acid which encodes the genome. So coronavirus is an RNA virus, not DNA. All right, we're getting close to running out of time. So the, I think the last three slides are examples. Uh, you're looking at a cell under a compound light microscope. Remember what a compound light, light microscope is. And what you see is something that's 50 micrometers in diameter. You can see a nucleus. You can see a cell wall. What type of cell is this? A plant cell? Yes, I would say you're right. And, and what makes it a plant cell? What about that description makes it a plant cell? It has a cell wall. That's one thing. But uh, bacteria have cell walls too. The what diameter? Uh, that gives you a hint, yeah. It's larger than most bacteria. But there's something else that's uh, jumping out at you. The type of microscope used to type see the of microscope. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to be using a light microscope to see this, but that it has a nucleus. Somebody said it, it has a nucleus. So what's, what distinguishes this cell from a, a bacterium is that a bacterium does not have a nucleus. So the nucleus and the cell wall indicate that it's a plant cell. Another example, looking under a microscope and you see something that's rod shaped, about four micrometers in length, has no apparent internal structures, but it does have a cell wall. What kind of microscope is used to see this? Mm -hmm. 
rod shaped, four micrometers, fairly small, does not appear to have any internal structures, but has a cell wall. With a, a scanning electron S. microscope. Um, scanning electron. Could, could be a scanning electron micrograph. Um, and, and what kind of a cell uh, would you say it is? Yeah. Uh, let me back up. Somebody said a scanning electron micrograph. No, it's not a scanning electron micrograph. Why? Excuse me. You say because it's looking at the internal structures. Yes. Yeah, the internal structures. It doesn't have any internal structures. So, did you say scanning? If you said scanning, then that's right. That would only show the surface. Town light microscope or the transmission electron microscope. Yeah, the fact that. Um, you can't see any internal structures suggests that it might be a light microscope. Four micrometers would be about the limit of magnification, but it could be either a light microscope or um, a scanning electron microscope. Either one, I think, would satisfy this description. Okay, we have one minute to do the last one. A uh, structure that is less than 0.02 micrometers does not have any internal structure. What type of microscope are you likely using? And what type of entity are you probably viewing? Okay, this is very small, 0.02 micrometers. Has no internal structure. A virus? Yeah, it's probably a virus, but what type of microscope are you using? The scan. Probably the scanning, because if you were to look at, say, a bacteriophage with, uh, with a transmission electron microscope, you'd see internal structures. So scanning would just show you the surface of the, of the virus. So because it is so small and uh, because you don't see any structures, it's probably a virus and you're probably using a scanning EM. Okay, uh, we are exactly on time now. So those of you who haven't taken the quiz, uh, do it before midnight and um, I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. I have a question, sir. The, the quiz should be through well, what chapter? It's ch uh, ch the first chapter of the textbook, and it's pages uh, five to nine. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I just have to ask you about the attendance, please. Uh, okay. I'm here. You're there. I, I will record you as present. Okay, cool. Thanks, sir. Anyone else that I uh, that I didn't record your presence? Did you get Violet Lincoln? Violet, uh, who? Lincoln. Violet Lincoln. Let me look. Um. You, you joined late, right? No, no, here you are. I didn't get Violet Lincoln. So, but I did now. And Amir, you're the very first one. And now I have you. Okay. Um, excuse me, did you get Halima? Say it again. Halima. How do you spell, uh, how do you spell it? Could you spell it for me, please? H A L W E M A H. 
H E L. No, H A. H A L. I don't have an H A L. H A. H, the letter H and the letter A. No. I'm sorry, I. The uh, microphone is fuzzy and I can't understand clearly what you're saying. You say H A L. <laughs> okay. Here are the people I don't have. Al Sayadi, Butts, Duran, Medina, Ibrahim. Jaron and Jaron, Sadie Leash, Mendez, Molan, Noor, Julian Sabri, Sands. Those are the only ones that are not recorded as present. So I think I might. Hello. Did, did you uh, join late? Yeah. OK, so you're not on the list yet. Um, when, I'm here. Yeah, uh, when, when your name shows up, I'll uh, record you as present today. Excuse me? Yes? Uh, my name is Medina, Teresa. Teresa Medina. Yes, okay, you're here. I just checked you in. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, do you have me in? I mean, it's I'm Duran. Duran. Uh, I have you now, Jacob, right? Jacob Duran? Yes. Yes. Okay, I've got you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, how about me, Duran Salazar? Salazar. I think I don't have you. Yes, I do have you, Duran Salazar. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Thank you. And Mike checked in, uh, Joey Lenau. Yes, you did. Okay. If nothing else, go do your quiz if you haven't already. And I will stop sharing the screen. And I'm going to how long do we have for the quiz? Till midnight tonight.